so excited to have you guys join me once again today for today's video I missed you guys and do me a favor go ahead and smash that subscribe button right now smash that like button uh, underneath this video as well let's go <laughs> we have to weigh that several, 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 several years in one company trying to move up the ladder and just using all of your years and all of your time trying to do that? Or do you want to go to college and have to spend less years and less time moving up? Because what it is, is if you have a college degree, it will take you less time to scale up the company. So if you have a college degree, it might take you two to three years to become a manager versus if you don't have a college degree, it would probably take you twice as long. So it would probably take you like five, six, seven years to become a manager. It just takes longer. Everything just takes longer. So do you want to get the degree where you can kind of, you can use it with any company and it saves you time in the long run or do you just want to go based on experience and hope that that particular company doesn't fire you? You know, so that's another thing as well. So be very, very aware of the fact that companies prioritize extremely so experience over any college degree that you might have. Unless you're going for specifics, right? So unless you want to be a doctor or a counselor or a psychologist or something like that, companies, and even then, <laughs> it's easier when you get some experience under your belt. But uh, companies prioritize it when it comes to corporate as well companies prioritize experience over anything else and that includes a degree so what does that mean that means that if you are someone that has three four five years of experience they are going to look upon that more favorably than someone with no experience but a college degree in a relevant field that's another thing that you should probably know. However, if you have both, then you get to not only charge more to companies by negotiating for your salary, and I will do a video on, on salary negotiation because a lot of people don't do that and they should, but um, you can charge more for your services because essentially that's what it is and your value goes up that much more. Uh, but, but that's something to keep in mind. Now. A lot of jobs that are worthwhile will require both a degree and some experience. Um, but that's another reason why we end up with such horrible managers. Horrible managers, especially in today's day and age, 2018. I will tell you, I've been in corporate for a while. I've never had a manager that I have liked. And I've been in corporate for several years. And so a lot of people work their way up. They spend a lot of years working to, to the managerial level and then you know getting promoted to that level and so they're very good at doing the actual job itself whatever it is whether it's manager of a store or whatever and so they're very good at doing the actual job itself so over time they get promoted to where they oversee other people the only problem with that is that overseeing other people is a different job from what they were doing it's a different job from what got them promoted in the first place and so what we end up with is a lot of people in managerial levels that have no business being managers have no business being leaders because they quite frankly and bluntly suck at it so 95 to 98 percent of managers are bad managers they suck at managing people and they just kind of they just really need to stick to the job that got them promoted into a managerial level in the first place. However, if you have both a bachelor's and experience, you're less likely to suck as a manager if you were to ever be in a managerial position. But that's why you find that a lot of times you might, if you have a bachelor's and you have some experience, you're probably smarter than your manager. I mean, I know I've thought that a lot of times. It's like, what is wrong with this person? Because a lot of times like they've spent so many years like with that company building up like their presence in that company so that's how they got to that position however when it comes to dealing with other people socializing and actually leading people no skills whatsoever because 
you know, they didn't really take the time to nurture those particular skills. And so you end up with a lot of managers that aren't even as smart as the people that they manage. So by pursuing your bachelor's, especially while you're young, you not only get the fullest and best experience possible, especially when it comes to interacting with different individuals with different mindsets, but you also set yourself up uh, very nicely for the future. You put yourself in a very good position, right? It's about positioning yourself for the future, not just for now. So understandably, there might be things that you want to do right now that you don't feel as though college necessarily will help in pushing those forward. And I agree because there are certain things and there are a lot of things actually in a lot of jobs that you can get without having a college degree. It's just, I mean, without having a bachelor's college degree, it's just the way that it is. I, I totally agree with that. But however, I will employ you to take some time and think about it because, and the reason I'm saying that is, again, I've seen a lot of older people that now that they're a little bit older, they want to kind of dip their hands in, in different things that require at least a bachelor's or require a higher form or higher level of education. And now they're having to debate whether or not they can even do that because they're older and they would have to go back and start from scratch, start from the bachelor's degree because there's no other way of doing it. So if you want to, I believe that it's essential to go to college, especially if you want to position yourself in the best position possible, not just for now, but also long-term wise, for long-term visions, because what you should understand and what is good for you to understand is that what you want right now is likely to change quite a bit over time. So what you want right now, I know it's strong, I know it's what you want right now. However, you need to prepare and you need to position yourself in such a way that you are in the best position possible, not just for right now, but also for the future. And I do believe that getting a bachelor's degree is a fundamental part of doing so. College, going to college, if you're thinking about whether or not you should go to college and you're trying to make the decision between going to college and potentially not going to college. College is not necessarily something that I had to debate over personally in my life. I never, there was really never a time period that I had to like vacillate between whether or not I was gonna go to college. Now, I realize that times have changed, especially now in 2018, and it is more of an option, and people are starting to realize that it's more of an option, whether or not you want to go to college, and people are starting to really debate whether or not it's worth it for them to go to college. So I feel like this is a great, great topic to discuss. For myself, I did go to college. I got a, a, a bachelor's. I double majored in psychology and business finance. And then I got a graduate in psychology, counseling psychology. So, and here I am now. Um, so I did go that route. I did choose to go that route. Now beyond the bachelor's, of course, I had to like make the conscious decision that I did want to proceed to a graduate degree but <clears throat> I actually made that decision very early on during my bachelor's because I wanted to go for psychology because I liked working with people but I was also aware of the fact that there's not much you can do with a psychology degree with a bachelor's in psychology unless you proceed to go to a graduate degree or a graduate program and get and get that graduate degree. I mean, there's just, you can't really use a bachelor's in psychology for anything psychology related necessarily. Like you can't be a counselor or a psychologist or anything like that unless you proceed to get, uh, you know, additional degrees on top of that. So I already knew kind of early on that that's what I would want to do and so that's the direction that I took. First thing that you need to do in deciding whether or not college is for you and whether or not you 
want to go to college is evaluating your options. Evaluate your life and evaluate what you want for your future. So what does that mean? That means you have some real hardcore thinking ahead of you. <laughs> you have some things to think about um, and you uh, need to really spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time thinking about these things because these are the things that are gonna shape your decisions and those decisions are what is gonna shape your future, your near uh, future. So the first step is realizing that it could take some time, but you have a lot of thinking ahead of you that you are going to need to do. And what you're gonna be thinking about is what are your future goals and what's important to you in life? You need to be able to not only think about that, but put that on paper because you need to be able to be fairly specific to a certain extent in realizing what it is that's important to you. What are the things that you like to do? What are the things that you value in life? And what kind of future do you want? So that's the first step. You have a lot of thinking to do. My recommendation, apart from just thinking about it, write some things down as well. Evaluate your life and what you want for the future. So make a pros and cons list. That's the second step. So not just thinking about it, once you think about it and you're, as you're spending time thinking about it, develop a list, a pros and cons list. The pros, you wanna put things and reasons why you would wanna go to college and how that would contribute to the type of future that you want. And cons, you wanna put reasons why you would not wanna go to college and why it might not necessarily be the best option for you. So make a pros and cons list during your thinking process and add all these things to the list. If you are an individual that wants to be an engineer and you wanna decide whether or not to go to college, you could put together a pros and cons list during your thinking process in which you update that pros and cons list during your thinking process. And so in the pros, you could have, well, engineers with college degrees get paid more, they have an easier time finding a job, and most in the engineering jobs do require at minimum a bachelor's degree. And in the cons, you could put, there are some engineering jobs that do not require a bachelor's degree. Uh, you could put the cost of going to college financially, um, or you could put whatever else it is that uh, you feel like fits in that cons list. An engineer is kind of a more general example because it, for me, my suggestion is if you're trying to be an engineer, most certainly go to college just because engineering is one of those jobs where a college degree is quite substantial, uh, especially if that's the field that you want to work in. If you want to work as a store clerk in the future, which there's nothing wrong with that, but if you want to work like a, as a store clerk or you want to be like a store manager, you know, in the future, and that those are kind of the type of things that you see yourself doing. It could be for any reason. Maybe you like dealing with different people on a daily basis and you like being on your feet and walking around and active and things like that and those type of jobs are what motivate you the most then you'd be looking at a completely different type of list and you'd be looking at potentially you know maybe college isn't something that you necessarily need to do at the moment so creating that pros and cons list is essential so in the pros you could put getting a college degree um, at least you would have the degree in the case that you were to ever need it uh, you would learn a lot of different things and a lot of different options you could put all those type of things in your pros list and then in the cons list you could put it doesn't necessarily directly contribute into the field that I want to work in as a store manager um, 
the financial cost, you know, things like that. So you'd be looking at a very substantially different pros and cons list. And I know a post, I know a pros and cons list seems a little bit like obvious, but a lot of people a lot of people don't think about that when they're trying to decide whether or not to go to college. They try to keep it all in their head, but putting pen to paper really, really helps you not only make those thoughts more physical, but it helps you process those thoughts in a more organized manner. And so you're better able to come up with a decision and the best decision for you. With that list, what you're essentially doing is evaluating the cost versus the value of going to college. Pros versus cons. Now, in my fair opinion, you guys, I know there are a lot, a lot of videos out there and a lot of other information out there that says that nowadays it's not worth going to college. Uh, but I would tend to disagree very highly with that. It is always to that person's advantage to go to college. College gives you the experiences that you need in order to be a better and more holistic human being overall. In college, you have so many people from so many different backgrounds that come to whatever college it is that you go, go to and you are learning to interact with those people, you're learning to work with those people, you're learning to be accepting of different cultures and different backgrounds and different mindsets that are different from yours. And not only that, you are learning from all those different cultures and furthermore making yourself smarter and that much more open and more diversified. I met a lot of people that are very close-minded and the challenge with close-minded people is that they don't even realize that they're close-minded. It's a huge challenge because how do you help someone that doesn't know that they're close-minded, right? Like, so I've met so many people that have never been outside of the United States. So when they see other people that have different cultures or eat different types of food, they don't understand it. They criticize it and they don't even know. They couldn't even begin to fathom why this particular individual might be doing this or this particular might, individual might be doing that and they criticize and they are just so narrow-minded and the the sheer ignorance is astonishing when i meet these kinds of people and what college helps you do is college helps you in diversifying your views and becoming smarter to be honest with you especially when it comes to being a lot more knowledgeable about different people and being around different people and being able to develop stronger and more meaningful relationships. That it's essential to go to college, especially if you have aspirations that go beyond just the uh, basic bachelor's level degree. Like if you want to be a lawyer, a doctor, a counselor, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, all of those degrees will most certainly require many 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 years of schooling and the bachelor's is only the first step so I think and I believe that it is a great choice to choose to go to college because even if you don't want that now if you do end up going to college and getting that degree you might change your mind in the future and that might actually be something that you want later on in the future and you will be able to get and just directly move on to getting your graduate degree or your master's degree without now having to worry about the fact that you'd be starting from scratch because you don't even have a bachelor's. And I've met a lot of older people that are in that situation, in that predicament, because when they were younger, they didn't necessarily want the bachelor's, but now that they're older and they've experienced a lot more, they wanna try different things and in different fields that, Lord and behold, require a higher level of education than a bachelor's. Getting a college bachelor's degree adds a lot more value to your overall portfolio and it helps you be a more well-rounded individual overall. Now, when I say your overall portfolio, that includes everything, right? Like 
that includes your work experience, your um, schooling experience, your uh, volunteer work, everything. So it adds that much more validity to you and your value overall. And not only that, it just makes you a well, a more and a better rounded individual. By going through these experiences, you also learn to develop meaningful and long-lasting relationships. And to be quite frank with you, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun when you, especially when you do it at a younger age. If you're a little bit older, it might not be as fun because you're most likely doing it because there's certain other things that you want to do and you can't do it without the bachelors and so you're really just kind of trying to get everything over with but if you're younger it's actually quite a bit of fun you can go to parties and things like that i will say one thing that i regret from doing my bachelors is i didn't really go to a lot of parties and i didn't really socialize as much i was a lot more of an introvert but nowadays I think a lot of college students and a lot of younger, younger uh, souls are picking up on that fact that college is actually a ton, a ton, a ton of fun and take advantage of that time. And yes, please party because once you get out here and you graduated, you trying to party is just not going to, it's not going to work, right? Like you trying to party every night like you did in college. That's not, the, that's not the scene out here in the real world. And so I definitely encourage, more than encourage, you know, the partying and the socializing uh, while you're in college because those will be uh, some of your best years if you, if you really take advantage of them. So sit down, start thinking, and start listing, okay? And evaluate those pro pros and cons very carefully and just make sure that you're making what you believe to be the best decision for you. I can't really make the decision for you. Uh, all of my tips and uh, thoughts and opinions are based on my experiences thus far from going to college and also from having and knowing a lot of people who did not or people who did not and now want to and kind of comparing and analyzing all of those circumstances together. Ultimately, you have to make this decision. No one else can make it for you. I know it's hard and it's confusing and you wish someone could just kind of tell you what to do. However, that's not going to be the case. You have to make it for yourself because you are the only one who has to live with yourself 24 seven. No one else has to do that. Even if you're married, no one else has to do that but you. And you need to kind of buckle down and really think about what it is that you want now and in the future. So there are quite a few things that you did not know about college. <laughs> you thought that title in the video was just clickbait. <laughs> But I'm going to need you to give me a little bit more credit than that, okay? Of course, I want people to watch my videos. Of course, I want you guys to take something from my videos and enjoy my videos and click on my videos. However, it's not just clickbait. I need a little bit more credit. So let's go ahead and get into some of the things that uh, a lot of people actually don't know and a lot of you guys probably don't know. One thing that you probably didn't know is that 95 to 98 percent of people actually do not go on to work directly in the field in which they acquired their bachelor's degree. For example, I, acquired, I double majored business finance and psychology, but when I went into corporate, it had nothing to do with that. I was in HR. So um, 95 to 98 percent of people actually don't go in to work directly in the field in which they acquired that bachelor's. As a matter of fact, on top of that, most companies for most positions do not actually care what your bachelor's is in, as long as you have one. For a lot of these positions that are like in the office and things like that, that require a bachelor's, most companies, when you get out there and you start looking for a job, what you'll notice is they don't necessarily care what your bachelor's is in, as long as you have one. And this is because what they're looking for is that you have the ability to do something and stick to it. I mean, a bachelor's requires at least a minimum of four years to get. So if you get that, then there's a pretty good chance that you have the ability to, to pick something and stick to it. So 
most of the time when you go out there and you're job hunting and you're looking at those job descriptions and they say bachelor's degree, they're not really gonna require a specific bachelor's degree. They just wanna know that you have one. You know, and that's just kind of the way that it is. And so, and that's one thing that you realize when you kind of get out there. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's one of the reasons why it's probably more beneficial for you to go and just acquire your bachelor's, especially while you're young, just because then you have it. And in the future, should this become a necessity, you can always tap into it. It's, a bachelor's is something that you never lose. You can't lose a bachelor's. <laughs> Once you get it, you got it, you're done, right? So um, that's another thing that you guys probably didn't know is most companies actually don't care unless you're applying for a very specific job. For example, engineering. There's a lot of different types of engineering jobs and uh, there's a few engineering jobs that don't necessarily require a degree, but most of the engineering jobs do require a degree. Uh, and so that would be a good example of where companies might want a specific type of degree. Now, what I will say about that, especially in the case of engineering, um, companies, another thing you probably did not know is that companies prioritize experience over education. Now, I know that the whole video, I've been telling you guys to go to college, basically, <laughs> and now I'm saying these things, <laughs> but on, I'm just trying to be honest with you guys. I'm trying to give you real information and, and that's what I do on my channel I try to keep it as real as possible but here the thing is companies prioritize experience over education they just do I'm not telling you guys these things to disencourage you I'm telling you these things because the, this this is information I wish I had to be honest with you but there are a lot of jobs in the United States that actually don't even require a bachelor so you can do very well and make a decent amount of money without getting a bachelor's and you know I see a lot of videos on that and a lot of videos on it's a waste of money and blah 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 but um, you know like I said earlier getting one in my most humble op opinion is the best way to go because it has a lot of other benefits that are quite quite frankly irreplaceable. So college doesn't fully prepare you for corporate. <laughs> Please know that. And college does not really fully prepare you for the real world in terms of things that would be really, really helpful to know uh, before actually stepping out into the world. For example, if you're going into corporate, college doesn't prepare you to be able to play corporate politics, to kiss like you're gonna need to in order to move up the ladder you're gonna have to kiss a lot of ass and be very good at it and do it every day and just keep doing it uh, it doesn't prepare you for the the politics that's in corporate there's a lot a lot of politics a lot of red tape in corporate a lot of favoritism it doesn't prepare you to deal with those things a lot of people might go into college thinking that once they come out because they went to college and got a bachelor's degree now they're prepared for the world, you know, but the, the world is in actuality, actuality a very, very, very different world once you step out here on your own and you're trying to make things happen. It's, it's incredibly different. It doesn't prepare you for the fact that you have to pay your bills on time, otherwise your, your credit goes shit and you can't do anything. So it doesn't prepare you for a lot of things. If those are things that you're trying to learn about, if you go to college, then you have time to learn about them. But make sure to keep the, keep it in mind and make extra efforts towards learning about those things. Maybe choose specific classes with your electives that might go over some of those things. College doesn't prepare you to know how to dress when you're in corporate. All of these things are things I had to learn through experience. So when I first stepped out into corporate, I mean, I wore tights and a shirt and like maybe like a little bit of like a shirt and it wasn't even like a long shirt that covered everything so you can already imagine I didn't I just didn't know any better and I had to learn everything through experience so college doesn't prepare you for all of those things so do keep that in mind so don't go to don't be one of those people that goes to college and then comes out with a bachelor's thinking that you know now you're ready because it's gonna like smack you outside the face and it's just gonna be a huge surprise for you so 
keep that in mind and make sure to put in a little bit of extra effort to learn about those things. Maybe choose specific classes towards those things if those are skills that you would like to learn prior to graduating with your uh, bachelor's degree. If you do go to college, you will be light years ahead of all the people that did not go and you will most likely be able to and learn those skills in a much quicker and faster fashion. So that's another advantage to go to college as well. It helps you and develops your brain for uh, more critical thinking and uh, it really kind of gives you some solid skills that will really help you out when you get out here in the real world, even though it doesn't necessarily target specific skills that you're most likely to encounter in the real world. <laughs> Opening a bank account, establishing credit, taking care of your credit, making sure no bills are late. These are all real world skills that actually have a significant impact on our lives on a daily basis that college doesn't cover. So uh, keep that in mind. But if you do go to college, you're more likely to be able to tackle these things and come out okay than someone that didn't. All right, Mayday family. That was such an exciting topic for me to talk about. I've been wanting to talk about it a lot more, a lot of more videos to come on it. Of course, like all topics, it's it can be somewhat of a broad topic. And I don't know how long this video is going to be. I hope it's not too long. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be one of the longer ones. But I promise all of these things are just legit and they're just based on experience. So I look forward to talking to you guys some more and getting to know you guys. Subscribe, hit smash that subscribe button, comment below, like this video, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. And as usual, I love you and uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.